2,197 people. Um, Ajar is bordered by five other provinces, Tinduf, Bashar, El Bayad, Gardia, and <laughs> and it's bordered by two countries, Mali and Mauritania. Ajar is con constituted of three regions, Tulet, and that is made out of Ajrar, Zuet, and Kunta, and Guira, which is made out of Agrut, Timimun, and Tidikelt, which is made out of Aluf. The geography of Ajrar. Ajar has an elevation of 846 feet above sea level. There is an oasis southwest of Ajrar that goes down to the Tulet region and north of Regan's north region. Overall, Ajrar is a vast land of sand dunes that is, is a vast land of sand dunes. While in the west there is a, um, a rocky plateau called Erkashech, and and in the um, east there is a in the east there's Tidamet. In total, Ajar is an arid plateau known for its gorges, stony patches of desert, and sand dunes regarding its geography. History of Ajar. Before the French conquest of Ajar, it was known as Timi, that was inhabited by the Timi people. The modern understanding of the name Ajar is derived from, is derived from the Berber word Adrar, or a mountain in um, the Berber language. Historically, Adrar was known as a static trading point that, um, that connected the north and west of Africa. Adrar was captured by the French from Moroccan forces in 1900 and became Algerian land upon Algerian independence. I have a... Yeah. And that is a nuclear bomb hitting Algeria on these Algerian men that you see right there. Um, yeah. So basically... Basically, under French rule in Adrar, Regan was an infamous site um, of nuclear testing. It was a program that was created after France saw the power that America had during World War II. So now in 1960, they created their own like nuclear bomb and they tested it in Algeria. so basically that was a french delegate at the united nations lying saying that there were no people in the region and they were able to use that as a testing site rather than use a island in the mediterranean sea that was empty they used the algerian land in um, and on So basically, that is the aftermath of a bomb hitting Algeria, um, Adar, and Regan. And I'm going to show you. There are four different types of bombs. The biggest bomb that was 500 kilotons was located here and was thrown off from here. There was one bomb that was 65 kilotons and it was thrown off from here. And there was a bomb that was, I believe, 5 kilotons that was hit off from here and 5 kilotons. You're going to see the difference between Little Man and Fat Man of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That was a mushroom cloud of one of the bombs. And that was people spectating a bomb. Those are French forces, and those are the Puy Noir. And that is the sound wave of a bomb. And that is, it was, it's not real, but it was remade as a historical lick to show people how the bomb affected human beings because they threw it on people as a test. They wanted to see how it affected them. And this is the four different types of bomb. There was gerbil blue, gerbil white, gerbil red, and gerbil green. And these are the different types of kilotons, and it was made out of pure fission with a plutonium core. So basically, when it hit the ground, it would just explode. They were basically all thrown off, but the 500 kiloton bomb, there was a problem with that because during Algeria, 
there was a incident called the Algiers Putsch. It was basically a failed coup by Algerians. Um, in the modern day, um, sorry, in the modern day, um, the, the testing site has serious consequences for the people living in Hadra because now most of them have cancer and health complications. So, due to the atrocities, atrocities France imposed on Algeria, it threatened an Iqra channel that was making a documentary on the atrocities France was, um, did to Algeria. So basically, during this news station, like when they were doing a, a presentation on Algeria and um, France's cruelties, France threatened them to shoot down their hotbird. A hotbird is a satellite that allows you to broadcast on um, your um, news station. So, um, basically, there was a man named Mohammed Musa Sharif who was explaining the French cruelty, and the, sh um, and the news channel was cut off. So, the France Country of Liberty, Equality, and Fraternity, or Brotherhood, refused the documentary to be published and threatened the hopper. Um, so, another incident that occurred was when Al Jazeera created their own documentary focusing on Rikyan, and um, they also um, threatened to shoot down their hotbird, and it, which created an outrage. Many Arab publishers around the Middle East promised to create a histoire of French atrocities against Algerians in retaliation. Over here, you see, like, on an um, um, Iqra news channel, that they are showing that Al Jazeera refuses to publish the online documentary on Rikyan at the French's behest. He's going to explain what happened. <laughs> So basically, it was what I explained to you, but in Arabic, through the Muhammad Sharif, yeah, Muhammad Musa Sharif, and basically, France just threatened um, multiple Arab news stations just to not show the cruelties that they imposed because they know that if they did, if like the Arab world did show the cruelties that France showed, the United Nations would come in 
And um, basically, these are a few facts I would want you to know. The Rigen bombing was 70 times larger than the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. One of the bombs was 500 kilotons. Now, Hiroshima and Nagasaki was 15 kilotons and 23 kilotons. So, yeah. It's infamous. They didn't... So the economic and demographic statistics of Adrar. So the population increases yearly despite the health complications and the location of desert. For example, in 1936, there were 800 people, and in 2008, there are 64,781 people. And Adrar is made out of um, 11 districts and 28 municipalities. A jar provides 14.4 barrels of crude oil per day from the gasoline business Sinatract and CNPC. And these are the barrel sizes. Now the culture. A jar um, is home to many um, ancient settle settlements and um, cultures from very different places. There is intermingling, intermingling from multiple um, people that live there. For example, the Timi people, they are prevalent in the area. But they have notably intermingled with the Tuareg culture, who inhabit lower um, Wargula, Timmin Reset, and the border of Adrar. But they are not the main culture. The traditional foods. Um, the traditional food is Hera. It's sort of like a soup. And um, the traditional dress, um, which reflects where they live, because they live in the desert. And to reflect heat, women usually wear light-colored clothing, and the men usually also color, um, cover their faces. Um, personalities from the region. So this is Tuwet, Bluebell Tuwet Najim. He's a regional singer who plays at parties and cafes. He's like a, um, famous in the region. And the personalities. Um, another one. Um, Sheikh Mohammed bin Kabir. He was born in 19... 11 in Boda in Adrar. At seven, he lost his mom and grew up in the care of his uncle after his father remarried. His uncle taught him Quran and he um, grew up with the Islamic teachings and he influenced, um, which influenced him to create an Islamic school in um, Adrar, which many people from many different places, especially in Africa, go to become educated in um, Quranic studies. And these are my sources. Just give that round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job. Nice job. Assalamu alaikum, Asa brothers and sisters. So, today I'm doing my project on Tibaza province. <laughs> My name is Anish Rui. 